Um, Ricky Beetle Blair is this year's Fusion Achievement Award re recipient. And this award acknowledges his inspiring contributions as a community leader and the rich and colorful vision Ricky has brought to film and television throughout his career. In 1995, Ricky wrote a movie called Stonewall, starring a young, very good looking Latino <laughs> in a dress. Fitz started off as a play and was designed to help tackle the growing problem of homophobic bullying in Britain schools. And since then, the DVD has been distributed to high schools across the UK. And Ricky and the original cast members have created workshops designed to assist teachers to confront issues around homophobic bullying in particular, and also bullying in general. A tireless artist. <laughs> a tireless artist and a true force of nature. Ricky's got flames on his shoes, goddammit. <laughs> Tonight. So on behalf of Outfest for his lifelong commitment to creating challenging and transformative entertainment, it is my pleasure to present the 2011 Fusion Achievement Award to Ricky Vito Blair. <laughs> Can you, can you see them? I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's not enough thank yous. There's somebody who wants to really say thank you to you. It's this little coloured boy in the 60s in South London. He's black now, but he was coloured then. <laughs> you know how it works. And you know, I kind of like coloured now because coloured is all of us. Oh, you didn't know I had a lesbian mother? Oh yes, I came out of the womb like this. Like this. And um, she um, encourages me to live. And I didn't realise just how much she encouraged me. Because of course, she taught me to read when I was three. And um, I decided straight away, as soon as I could read, I, I started to write, and I decided I was going to be a writer. And I said, how did you do it? And she said, it started when I was pregnant with you. I decided I was going to have this kid. And I told my um, sister, who was um, her guardian, I'm going to have this baby. And her sister said, you're going to have to, have, you're going to, have to get this kid adopted. You cannot do this. Um, and she, and um, she said, I'm leaving. And I said, what did you do? And she said, I stayed at a friend's house. I locked myself in the bathroom. I looked at myself in the mirror. And there you were, this little lump. And I looked at myself in the mirror. And I thought to myself, I'm black. I don't have much of a formal education. People say I'm not pretty. If you've seen her, you know she's beautiful. But people say I'm not pretty, I'm short, I'm extremely curvy, and I don't have any money. How am I going to make this work? And she said she saw herself in the mirror and said, this is enough, and this will get me through. And I start saying this to everybody. One day, I'm going to go to Hollywood and get a prize. And people tell me, you're too black, you're too short, you're too gay, you're too effeminate, you don't look pretty enough. You do not fit. But here I am, in Hollywood, with my prize. And this, this journey has taught me, way before this moment, that Hollywood is not a place. You are Hollywood. You can be Hollywood. It's in you. I promise you, I will try to deserve this. Because this, I understand now, isn't for me. This is for little coloured boys in South London, and South Central, and South America. This is for everyone.
This is for little colored boys and girls who have considered suicide when they're a little Hollywood. Right now. 